Now I need to pay particular attention to spelling because if you misspell one word, you will get a zero. And you need to pay attention to capitalization. So for instance, here we have the address. I need to come up with the address. So this is the name of the street. It should be capitalized. So it should start with a capital letter. Richmond is already capitalized. And here, what do we need for the phone number? What do we need? Number. Numbers. Yeah. yeah, we need a number. And as I said before, so they will give you the number. And sometimes uh, they will give you, you know, the wrong one. And, and then uh, they will say, oh, sorry. And they will give you the, so make sure that you get the, the, the right number. It's very important. And uh, as I said before, don't expect them to uh, speak slowly, okay? So you have to pay attention. And then the type of license. So what types of license can you think of? Uh, this is a driving license, okay? It's this is private or public. Yeah, public or private. Maybe public, maybe private. Great. And the type of vehicle, now that's the car. That's the car that the person is going to rent. So what type of vehicles can you think of? Maybe Toyota. Toyota, it's a, you know, it's a brand or it's a main. Oh, no, oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, the type of car. Maybe car or bus, maybe? Yeah, okay. You know, it could be a sports car, for example. Oh, okay. I'm not sure, okay? So I'm just guessing. So we try to make some predictions. Um, so that when we listen, uh, you will be uh, very focused on the task, okay? So you need to predict. So what type of license? You said, well, maybe it's local license. Maybe it's international license, okay? Maybe. Maybe uh, one. Be maybe. Careful. Yeah, the type of vehicle, yeah, it could be a van, yes, or it could be a, a two-door car, so it has only two doors, because we have two-door cars, we have four-door cars, okay? Yeah, okay. Now, what about the dates of collection? What do I need here? Date. Date. Number. Yeah, date. In terms of numbers. Months and days. Yeah, and if you have a month, so wh what should you pay attention to if you have a month? A bit a letter. For the yeah, month. good, excellent. Okay, so I need to pay particular attention to capitalization. It's very important. Okay, now the length of booking. What do you expect to have here? The length of booking. Days, numbers of days. Yeah, so maybe one day, maybe one week, maybe whatever. Now, is it okay if the answer is if the answer is one week and instead of writing one week, I wrote seven days? Is it okay? Mm. So instead of one week, uh, I will write seven days. Now, will they accept my answer? This is my question. Yes or no? Yes. Yeah, they will accept it. I told you guys. So as long as you come up with the exact paraphrase, okay? So they will accept it. So seven days, uh, We could, uh, if you have, uh, for example, half an hour, so I, I'd rather write 30 minutes, okay? So which is easier. So maybe if I uh, uh, write the word half, maybe I'll make a mistake, okay? So it's safer to write 30 minutes, okay? And then, now this is what you call a form filling exercise. And here you should not exceed how many words? More than three words, okay? I told you that when you have this type of instruction, so no more than three words, means that one of the answers uh, couldn't be answered in less than, uh, or in fewer than three words, okay? So, but most probably some answers will be one word, others would be two words, but the maximum number is three words, okay? Uh, this task here, the second one, no more than two words. Now, this is what they call a short answer question. 
And here you have to be careful and you need to write what you call the content words. Now I have already talked about this before. Uh, I will just simply type it here, the content words. Okay. Uh, now, well, what do you expect to, the answer could be here, the man will pick the car up from, what do we expect? Is it uh, time? Is it place? The man will pick the car up from place. 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 Yeah, it could be a place. Okay, good. Uh, the car is needed at it's time. Yeah, this is so. So here I'm going to write place. Okay. And here I'm going to write time. Okay, time is fine. And then A is also needed. So we need something here. So what could it be? A noun. And it should be countable or uncountable? Uncountable. A. Countable. And if A. Excellent. Yeah, because we have A, it must be a countable noun. Okay. Now, what do you think a person may need in a car? What do you think? Uh, they might, might need maybe insurance insurance now if if you have rented a car before maybe well insurance is not something it is already there but this is what you know the person ID, who, uh, ID. ID? ID card maybe say and had or uh, uh yeah. And, oh, and yeah. yeah, deposit? Deposit, uh, you can. Yeah, maybe deposit, yes. So, okay, maybe. Okay, great. <clears throat> yeah, okay. And then here, we the man decides to take the, what do we need? So here we need a noun, right? So we need a noun, which is a countable noun. We need a countable noun. Okay, and here, the man decides to take the, what do we need? Something, any noun? Yeah, is it a noun, a verb, adjective? I'm talking about the type of the word, guys. Noun. Noun, yes, it must be a noun. So the plus noun, this is a root. Okay, great. Now we're gonna go uh, over them again. So here we need the name of a street. Okay, name of a street. I need to pay attention to capitalization. Uh, here he said, well, I need a number, the phone number, okay. Cool. And for phone numbers, guys, for British English, instead of zero, what do they say? Oh. Oh, oh. yeah, okay. It's oh, okay. And if uh, if you have uh, two numbers, so the same number, so they would say double. Double. And if you have three numbers, they would say? Double. double. Triple, yeah, triple. And the quadruple if you have four, but I don't think so. Okay, anyways. Now, type of license. So you said it could be local, it could be, well, we need an adjective here. International, maybe. Yes, adjective, cipher. Okay. And the type of vehicle, well, you said it could be a van, it could be a sports car, it could be, I don't know, a sedan, six seater, whatever, two door cars, four door cars, we don't know. Okay, type of vehicle. And the data collection, you said we know what we need a date. Okay, so and it will be given the numbers. Okay, great. And the length of uh, booking, yeah, we need a period of time. So it could be three days, four days, one week, one month. Okay, now I think you're settled. So what should you do now? You're going to listen. And I don't know, do you have a notebook and a pen? Or if you want to open a you know, a Word document on, on your computer, you have to write one to 10 guys, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, because I'm not going to stop here, uh, the recording, uh, because this is a test. Okay, normally, normally you should score uh, seven above. So if you score less, you really have a problem. Okay, so seven uh, plus 
well, that's our target, seven plus. Okay, now this is section number one. If you are able to, uh, and I said, this is the easiest one, the easiest one, okay? You should not lose marks here. But if you scored seven mm -hmm. and uh, multiplied by four, it will be 28. So 23 is uh, band six, uh, which is really good. Cool. Okay. Now, once you are ready, tell me so that I can play the recording. Are you ready? Thank you. Are you ready, guys? Ready, ready. Yes, I'm ready. Okay, you should have you should have uh, written you know the numbers from one to ten, okay, so mm -hmm. that you can write record your answers, and then we're gonna check. So just give me a second. I need to go to the listening file. Where is it? Uh, this is. Uh... Uh, uh, which track is this, guys? Which track is, is this? I need to go to the um, uh, share button. Okay. Yeah. So this is a track. No, this is the number of track. It's track number nine. Yes, number oh. nine. Okay, cool. Um, I need to go to number nine. <clears throat> okay, there we go. Track nine. Okay, can you hear the sound? Yes. Okay, good. Okay. Now, we're going to start part number one, and then they will pause for a while, and they will give you some time to read the questions before you attempt any answer. Okay, so this is part number one, and as I said before, I'm not going to stop the recording because this is supposed to uh, supposed to be a test. Uh, okay, let's get started. There we go. Track nine. Good morning, Golden Wheels Car Rentals. How can I help you? Yes, good morning. I'd like to make a booking for a car, please. Can I just get your name, sir? Yes, Frank Moorcroft. Could you spell that, please? Yes, Frank, F-R-A-N-K, Moorcroft, M-O-O-R-C-R-O-F-T. And the address? My home address? Yes, please. We need a home address. Okay, it's number 26, Lake Road, Richmond. Right. And could I get your home telephone number there? Yeah, sure. Well, the area code is 02, and the number is... Let me think. Three, three. No, sorry. I haven't learned this number yet. Um, it's three, six, eight, seven, four, five, double, zero. Thank you. And do you have a current license, sir? Yes, I do. But it's not an Australian license. I haven't had time to get that organized since I arrived here. Oh, well, you do need an Australian one if you're living in this country. Oh, but I have an international license. That should be okay, shouldn't it? Oh, that'll be fine. We'll just need to see it when you pick up the car. Right. Now, what kind of car were you looking for? Well, I've got my wife and our three children with me and quite a lot of luggage, so... So you'll need a station wagon or a... I don't mind what make it is, but I'd like a four-door car. It's much easier with the kids, or maybe even something larger. Well, if you go up to a six-seater, you'll be into the next price bracket. No, thanks. <laughs> And when do you need the vehicle? Well, I'd like to pick it up in the morning, if that's possible. Not a problem. Let me just note that on the computer. Collect car on the 23rd of June. No, tomorrow's the 24th of June, not the 23rd. Oh, of course it is. I'm sorry. And what's the rental cost? Well, the rate is $70 a day if you have it for more than three days. Otherwise, it's $90 a day. We'll need it for a week. Well, then it'll be $70 a day. That's 490 all up. And where would you like to collect the car, sir? At our Melbourne City branch? 
No, we're arriving by plane, so we'd like to pick it up from the airport. Yes, certainly. At approximately what time? The flight gets in at 11 in the morning, so by the time we've collected our bags, I'd say we'd need the car at around lunchtime. Right. I'll make sure it's available for you then. And do you require any other special equipment? Maps, GPS, that sort of thing? Yes, actually, we do. Thanks for reminding me. We have a two-year-old, so she needs a child seat. Can you organise that? Certainly can. I'll see that there's one in the car for you. And what about insurance? Is the car fully insured? You're partially covered, but we do recommend that you take out extra cover in case you have an accident. Otherwise, you'll have to pay the first thousand dollars of any repairs. What do you think? Oh, <laughs> I suppose I'd better have the extra insurance. Better to be safe than sorry. Good idea. I'll get that organised for you too. Okay. Now, this is the test. Um, now, before I, uh, we share the answers, uh, I would like you to tell me uh, your take on the test. Now, was it easy, average, or difficult? No, easy. 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 Oh. Yeah, difficult. Well, easy. Yeah. Okay. Well, alhamdulillah, inshallah. So maybe after uh, I give you the answers, you will change your mind. I don't know. Okay. Now, for number one here, the address, what is it? Lake Road. Road. Okay. Who said this? Lake Road. Yeah, yeah. Huda. Huda. Okay, yeah. Could you spell Lake Road for me? Uh, L A K E uh, R O A D. R O A D. No, R O A D. Okay, now is this fine? Yes. Is this fine? Uh, yeah, excellent. So here I need to capitalize road. I told you that name of uh, names of streets. Okay, so they have to be capitalized. Lake and road. Now, if you did not capitalize road, you will get a zero, unfortunately. Okay. One yeah, yeah. I have already told you this. Okay. Uh, this is, you. you know, better, better safe than sorry. So you have to know these things. Okay. So, and this is why I told you whether the test was easy or difficult. You said easy. Okay, I said, okay, we're going we're gonna to see this after the answers. Okay, now, if you, if you wrote like wrote, like this one, give yourself one mark. If you didn't write it this way, if you did not capitalize, for example, road, or you did not capitalize lake, give yourself zero and keep smiling, okay? So, the phone number, what is it? So, it starts with 02. Yes? 3684500. Okay, 3? 68. 68. Then? 74. 74. 500. 500. Okay, now, is this fine, guys? Yes. Okay. okay, now that's fine. Okay, good. Uh, we move on. So the type of license, what is it? International. international. Yeah, excellent. Okay. Got it. International. Yeah. yeah, international. Okay, now here there is a rule in pronunciation. There's a rule. Now, if you have um, the T, okay, and then followed by ER. Uh, so in American English, you have to drop the T, okay? You will not hear it. I'm talking about American English. Okay, now this one here, you have to drop it. Now, the guy said international, international. You see, like the word center. So in British English, American would say center, center. Okay, they would not say center, like British people. Now, this is why here the guy said international, not international. Is it clear? Yes. Well, you have to be aware of, you know, these uh, this pronunciation rule. Okay, the type of vehicle. Four door car. Okay, now okay, it's a four door car. But how should you how should you spell it? So who can give me the spelling? Yeah, it's a four. Okay, so we we have already agreed that whenever you have a digit, so please uh, do uh, do write numbers in digits like this one four. And then what should we write? Door. Yeah, door. Door or doors? 
دورز بالاس لانه جمع فور اه لانه اس اوكي اند هي كار رايت اوكي ناو از ذس كوركت نو نو ذس از نوت كوركت فور كار فور دور كار اتس اتس ا فور دور كار اي هاف اوريدي توكت اباوت ذس رول اي تولد يو ذات ذس از وات يو كول ذا كومباوند ادجيكتيف اوكي اتس ا نمبر بلس سينجولار ناو Like for example, while well, I have a five-day holiday, we cannot say we cannot say I, I have a five days holiday. That's wrong. And I've given you the example of a book. Now oh, it's a 250-page book, but not pages book. And I've given you the example of uh, I think a building, so which has got uh, 13 floors. We say or 13 stories, whatever. So th we say we say 13. Uh, floor building. We don't uh, add the S of the plural here. So it must be the type of vehicle. So it's a four door car. It must be like this. Okay. Uh, and the hyphen is not that important. Although uh, a compound adjective should be hyphenated. But if you uh, did not uh, put the hyphen, well, that's not a problem. Okay. Now, date for collection. When is he going to pick up the car? When? 24th of June, uh, June 24th. Yeah, so it's uh, here, June, okay? June. We can write June 40, uh, 24, that's fine. But you need to capitalize the J, June. okay? June. Now, if you if you don't capitalize it, unfortunately, you will get a zero, okay? Now, if you're not someone, if you're someone who cannot, or for example, there are some students who cannot uh, spell the word August correctly. Okay, so in this case, well, I know which month is um, August. Eight. Eight. Okay, August. so yes, here. So as an alternative, so I can write the twenty-four. So like this, and the June is uh, six, right? Six. Yeah, we yeah. can write like this. No problem. So no problem. You will get a full mark. Okay. So if if you're someone who doesn't know, for example, how to spell a month. Of the year, so go for this one, no problem. The 24 and 06, okay. Or you can say 24th of June, no problem, guys. I think there are about maybe six or eight, nine ways of you know spelling dates, no problem. Okay, now the length of booking, and here we need a period of time. How long a is week. A week. A week. Yeah, so we can write, we can write a week. Or seven days. Is this fine? No, double E. Oh, very good. Yeah, so here, this is what you call a homophone. Now, you have two words. Um, they have the same pronunciation, but they are spelled differently, and they have different meanings. So that's what you call a homo. Homo means one, homophone. So be careful when you spell your words. So week is W W E K. Okay. Or we can say, is there any other alternative here? Seven days. Yes. Yeah. Seven days. So I can write seven days. Now, what happens if I wrote instead of days, I wrote seven day? What, seven days. Day. We can write it. What? Strong. No, this is, yeah, it must be with us. So here, grammar should be respected. Okay, yeah. so it's a number plus a countable noun. You should write seven days. Otherwise, you will get zero. Okay, now this is the first part. Um, I don't know how much you scored, guys. Okay, but later on, when I, when we uh, when we share all the answers, so I would like you to tell me about the score that you got. Okay, now we move on to the. Oh my God. Here, the second part. Now, which is the short answer question. Now, the man will pick up, or the man will pick the car up from, what is the place? Airport. The airport. Okay, here we have the airport. Okay. And I said we need to focus on content words. Now, the, which is a determiner in this case. Okay, it's a determiner. You can do without it. No problem. You can write from airport. Okay, although grammatically it is not correct, but the answer is acceptable because this is what you call a listening comprehension. Okay, so if you wrote the airport, uh, I, I will just put it between, you know, brackets or between parentheses. Okay, so that you understand. Well, this is not required. If you wrote it so much, the better. If you didn't, well, that's not a, a big issue. Now here, the car is required at... Lunchtime. 
Lunchtime. Okay. Lunchtime. Now, the problem with lunchtime is that it's, you know, one word. It is not two words. Okay. Lunchtime is one word. But still here, are there, are there any alternatives instead of lunchtime? Afternoon. Yeah, we can say noon, at noon. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Noon, which is midday. Okay. At noon is okay. No problem. Lunchtime is the best choice, but if you came up with noon or midday, no, it's not an issue, okay? So both are acceptable. Okay, now, A, something is required. What is it? Yeah, it's a child seed. Yeah, okay, good, very good. Now, if you wrote a child seed, no problem. It's a compound noun, okay? So child seat or child seat, no problem. Okay, uh, the man decides to take the what? Extra, yeah, the extra, extra, extra cover. Insurance. Yeah, the extra insurance or the extra cover, both are correct. Okay, the extra insurance. So the extra insurance and here, so I'll, uh, Insurance is misspelled. Okay, the uh, extra insurance or the extra cover, both are correct. Okay, now what I would like you to do, I would like you to, um, you know, give yourself one mark for each correct answer and tell me uh, your final score, guys, out of 10. Okay, so let me ask you, um, here we have four students. Uh, Rama, how much did you get? It is eight, right? Oh. Okay. You have uh, two mistakes only, so it's eight, right? Okay, oh. okay good. Abdurrahman? I'm eight also. Eight? Yes. Okay. They will go to hell, okay? <laughs> I don't care about you guys. Okay. Uh, Huda, how much did you score? Uh, nine. Oh, mashallah. Very okay. And uh, Khawla, I guess. Uh, the airport was my kutabta. Give me your score, okay? I... Uh, nine, you can. Nine, okay. Can you scroll it down? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. I will do that. Okay, well, well. Okay, so it's eight then, right? Yeah. Okay, great. Yes. Okay, you're very good, guys. You don't have to go to Musafra to change any or to looking for you know some spare parts. Okay, you're fine. Uh, yeah. So even if you scored seven, because this is the first, uh, you know, test. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. You're good. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. That's what I said. Okay. So, but it's okay because this is the first time. يعني, uh, but English, you should not be more royal than the king. Okay, now that's fine. That's fine. Okay. Um, now here, uh, what are we going? Our folks will be on, you know, the details. Okay, now identifying the details. Okay, now one, there are actually two reading strategies. Uh, one, uh, sorry, listening, listening strategies. Now we have the top down the top-down approach or the doctor the top-down listening listening strategies and the opposite the opposite is the bottom up bottom up listening strategies the strategies okay now Actually, there is a big difference between them. Uh, and here, the top-down listening strategies, oh, it means here you need to focus on the details, uh, sorry, on the main idea. 
So it's like skimming. When you are reading, it's like the skimming. Okay. So first of all, you need to read the question and you decide, you should decide whether to choose this uh, I mean, this approach, the top-down listening strategies or the bottom-up listening strategies. Now, for this one here, you should ignore the details and you should focus on the main idea only of the message, okay? Now, here, so this is for the main idea, uh, I will write main idea questions, okay? Now, for this one, the bottom-up, it is the opposite. So, you focus on the details, okay? And then, okay, it's like this, the details, 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 until you get to the main idea. Okay, now this is when you are dealing with uh, what you call um, uh, detail questions, or I will write DQS, detail questions. So this this is like, for example, in reading while, while you are skimming, uh, sorry, this one when you are scanning, uh, for this one when you are skimming, okay? So it's like this. Now here, normally we should uh, use or make use of this uh, approach or listening strategies, so which is the bottom-up listening strategy, okay? So identifying the details. We need to show that we can listen carefully to, to a description and understand it fully. If someone is describing something, it is the detail in the description, such so as the color uh, or preference to the shape, which allows us to picture it accurately, okay? Now, this is like... If you remember last time, I think we did uh, writing and it was about describing a chart. So it's like, like this. So you have to pay attention to the details and you need to describe, to describe them carefully so that the examiner can conjure up the, the, the picture that you're describing or the visual representation that you are describing. Okay, now here we have some items. Uh, now, uh, for number one, what do you think this is? Scoreboard. Say what? A type of ball. Yeah, it's a type of ball. Okay, this is what you call a rugby ball, guys. I think you know the uh, the word rugby, right? It's like the American football. Yes. Yeah. It's a rugby ball. Now, what shape is it? Now, here we're going to... Oval. Oval. Yeah, excellent. So, it has a noble shape or it's oval. Okay. And what color is it? Brown. brown. Yeah. What color? Brown, yeah. And what do you call these things here on the top? One, two, three, four, five, six. What do you call them? Oh. What? Oh. Yeah, they are stitches. Okay. Right. Okay. Now, now, if I want to describe this ball, well, I would say it has an oval shape. And it's a brown, and it's got stitches on top. Now this is, you you can identify this. Is it clear? Yes. Oh, okay, yeah. good. Now for number two, what is it? Uh, child toys. Yeah, it's a it's a child toy. Okay, toy. Uh, 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 and what does it make this toy when you shake it? Sound. Yeah, so it produces some sound. This is what you call a rattle, rattle toy. Okay. You know rattle? It is shh, the sound. You know the rattlesnake? Snake. You know a snake? Yes. Yeah, when we say the rattlesnake, uh, it produces sound from its tail. You know the snake, right? Yeah. Yeah, this is a rattle toy. Okay. Now, and this one? Stick. Yeah, it's a stick. Okay, it's a stick or it's a cane. You understand the word cane? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cane or a <laughs> Intelligent dialect. Okay, so a cane or a stick. Great. And why do people use this? To help them walk straightly. Yeah, okay. Yes, so it is all okay. people may use it. Okay, to, you know. Or for magic. Yeah, it's like a crutch, or or yeah. So if magicians may use this, okay. So they put a piece of bread inside a hat, and then it becomes a rabbit. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, these these things, what are they? It is not so, the... this one. A telescope or a shaitani? Telescope. 
Oh, I, I don't think you use this device. There is, another word. there is another word also for this one. Yeah, I have written the first letter. Okay, try to make some guesses. I can't remember. You cannot remember. Okay, now these are called binoculars. Okay, now binoculars. Okay, now binoculars, we use them. Okay, uh, if, if you want to, if you want to, see something which is far away from you okay we use these uh, or this device is it clear yes okay binoculars or oh, buy means two like bicycle okay uh this is why we buy okay great and then what do we call these i know that you women pin. you know them yeah the, what is the pin guys <clears throat> then for the board Yes, so these are pins, yes, for the, and these are what do we call them? These are not pins. For needles? Needles, yeah, very good. Okay. So needles and we have uh, pins. Okay, cool. And this one? Bottle of water. A bottle of water, yeah. So uh, you know the word the flask? Yes. Flask in the lab. I don't know. In the lab, yeah, yeah, okay. But here, you know, I, I yeah, it, it's kind of a bottle, but here we have bubbles, so maybe this, I don't know, or maybe so the whole thing, yeah, okay, yeah, in the lab. So it's anyway, it's a container, okay, so it's a glass container. Glass, what does glass mean in Arabic? La Glass, I mean, is Zujaj. Zujaj. Yeah. Okay. The Muatnian will say Zuyay. Well, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Right? Gazaz. Zuyay. Gazaz. Bye. Okay. Uh, this one, it's a uh, what is it? Gift. Yeah, it's a gift. It's a present. Okay. And uh, this one, what do you call this? Uh, Benzel. Benzel. Burn. No, no. Uh, this one is okay. Now this is a uh, Benson. Benson. Yeah. Yeah, Bunsen, burn. right? Bunsen. Bunsen like this, okay, burner. burner. Yeah, it's a Bunsen burner, yeah. We use this in labs, okay. Bunsen or Bunsen? Is it with S or with Z? I'm not sure, guys. I'm not sure, me too. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. Okay, anyways, I will check it out, no problem. Okay, now I think it's uh, with S. Okay. Uh, and this one, it's a gift. And what do you call this one? I mean, uh, here, the pink one. Rope. It's called, huh? Rope. Uh, I'm not sure if I heard you correctly, but it's a ribbon. Ribbon, yeah, yes. It's a ribbon, yes. Okay, and this is a, a way of uh, wrapping up gifts. Okay, cool. Now here we have vocabulary to describe things. So uh, we can talk about the shape. It could be something could be round, could be oval, rectangular, circular, spherical, cylindrical, like a cylinder. You know the gas cylinder, guys. جرة جرة كما جرة الغاز إيه cylindrical okay now it could be shape like a and then uh, you could say like a rectangle like a circle like a sphere like a cylinder okay uh, it could be square cube now this one is it a square or cube this one cube cube yeah مكعب uh, okay and it could be pointed like this one so pointed Okay, with a pointed end, with a sharp end. Okay, qualities could be colored, could be striped. You understand the word striped? Lines. Yeah, 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 very good. Yeah, so like, okay, that this is a bed. Yeah. This is the bed. Okay, it could be like this one. Okay, now this is what you call striped. Yeah, striped shirt. Okay, and here we have. Uh, we have the word spotted. What does this mean? Dust. Yeah, excellent. Very good. For example, the cheetah. You know the cheetah, right? Yes. The tiger or the stretch. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, and uh, yeah, cheetah the, the was cheetah, it, yeah, yeah, it has a spotted skin. Okay, spotted skin. Okay, and something could be sharp, like a knife. And what is the opposite of sharp? Care. Okay. Yeah, blunt. We say, for example, the knife is a blunt. Yes. So blunt it means it doesn't cut properly. 
okay blunt uh okay then other parts we could talk about the head of something the face of something the eye of something the neck of something top uh main outer inner part which is inside the outer part outside and the main part okay then the side handle the understand handle with the hand yeah okay so like the door handle okay then bottom and end okay cool position we can say on one side the end say... sure, yeah the end sure, yeah, the end the end of which yeah. one the end of something and yeah the end of something okay okay now for example you can say at the end of the room and the end of okay so and now one side both sides so in the middle on or at the top above below around inside horizontal now this is horizontal guys okay so it's like this now that's a horizontal vertical and horizontal and vertical yes so like the crossword puzzle so you have uh, I'm wood. Yeah. okay good then we have wood or wooden or we can talk about the wood wooden table or wood table paper uh, leather do you understand what leather is yes yes jilt jilt, jilt. but rubber Matar. Yeah. Matar. okay like a rubber ball okay metal any type of metal. Hadid. Yeah, very good. Madan, Hadid, Nahas. We can say iron. Iron, copper. Hadid, copper, brass. Okay, gold, silver. Now, these are all types of metals. A glass. What is a glass? Zujaj. Zujaj. Who's your cuba? Yes. Cuba glass. But when you use the metal, okay. I'm really bad at drawing, so I will uh, I will delete all of them. They're annoying. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, plastic, you know plastic. Plastic. Yeah. Plastic. Okay. Good. Now, here, um, there's someone who is going to describe uh, this one. So, you're going to hear a description. Now, that's why we learn these words. So, that we will hear a description of how a fire extinguisher works. Okay. Now, what is a fire ex extinguisher? What is it? Uh, in English, so try to describe it in English. A cylinder shaped. Uh huh. There is uh, something inside. Yeah, but my, my question is what is it? Uh, why do we use it? We use it to step for uh, to shoot stop the fire. The fire. To kill the fire. <laughs> To put out fire, to up yeah. the fire. Yeah, we can say to put out fire, or we can say to extinguish. So this is why the name extinguish. So to extinguish fire, or we can say to smother. Oh my God, to smother a fire. So to smother. Okay. We can now, say to stop fire. To stop oh, no. fire, yeah, maybe from widespreading, you know. But here to yeah. put out oh. in Arabic, yuhmed, yuhmed in nar. So extinguish, yeah, extinguish, put out or uh, smother. Okay. Now look at the diagram of the fire extinguisher below and discuss the parts you need to label. So label means to give them a name. Is it clear? Label. Yeah, because here the word is label the diagram. Okay, give it a name. Now, what do you think they might be? What sort of description, words, and phrases might help you? Okay. Now, uh, this is the I'm fire sorry, No. Yeah. Okay. Now, this is a fire extinguisher. Extinguisher, sorry. Uh, what is the most important thing for me to focus on as an IC student? What is it? Start from number one. Yeah, excellent. Order. Yeah. Yeah, so all the questions are in the right order of the, uh, of, sorry, uh, they follow the same order of the listening um, uh, clip. So number one here, number two, number three, number four, and number five. And we need to pay attention to these words. What do we call them? Uh, 
مساعدة. They have a name. Okay. Now these are what? يساعدنا عشان نعرف الجاب اللي بعدها. Yeah, but they have a name. A uh, key. Yeah, keyword. Keywords. Ahsanti, very good. Yeah, so these are called the keywords. Now, and I told you that. Now, uh, this is what will happen, guys. So when they write something, it will be reflected in the listening. Okay, so we need to pay attention to these words. So it is true that you will hear them, but maybe not the exact words. So you will hear to a paraphrase. Okay, synonym of these words or whatever. You're lucky you will hear the same words. Now here we're looking for something, number one, which is filled with water or foam. And that's number one. This one. Now, as I told you before, so, you know, when we were doing reading, we talked about the schematic level of understanding. Now, schema is what you call the prior knowledge, what you already know. So I know that this fire extinguisher could be in your home or it could be in your car. I'm sure that, you know, you're familiar with it. Now, what do you think we call this big part here? What do you think it is? Cylinder. Maybe a cylinder, yeah. Okay, so we try to make some predictions and then we listen to confirm our predictions or to adjust our predictions. Now, this is what you call active listening. Now, this is the difference between you and someone who is not, who doesn't have the required the skills to score really high. Now, simply because uh, you have to be an active listener. Now, by predicting the type of word, and maybe the word itself, so because you have some information about, uh, some knowledge about the word, so you can predict it without even listening. Okay, so, well, I could say, well, this could be a cylinder. That's not a problem. Okay, number two, what do you think this one here is? Which tube. is long and thin. No, 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 no. No, no, we're not talking about the tube here. We're talking about this one. This, you see, ah, it could be a tube. Uh, I thought you were talking about this one. This is what they call a flask. Okay, now, it could be a tube, this one. But I think it's metal. Mm -hmm. String. Okay, no problem. A string, a spring. Now, this is what you call a spring, this one. No, I have a spring. Yeah, um, we're silk, talking about this silk, one. Maybe. Yeah, it looks like what here? It looks like a needle, right? Like a tube. It's like a tube. Like... Yeah, like oh, a tube. Okay, no problem. Because here we start with these words. And maybe some of these words we're going to use or we're going to need when we do the listening task. Now, it looks like a pin for me. Maybe it maybe looks I... like a tube for you. Maybe you have to be flexible, I said. Okay, now, number three. What do you think it could be? Number three. Handle. And maybe, maybe it's handled, maybe. Okay. And here we have this nozzle and it gives off of water. Now this is water coming out, you know. What do you what do you think? What do you call this? Spray. Spray. Maybe spray, yeah, maybe. Okay. And then here we have water leaves through this. What do you think this thing is? Bye. Maybe pipe. Okay. Pipe. Okay, maybe pipe. Okay, now what are we going to do? We're going to listen. I'm not going to stop the recording. And you need to come up with the, the, the five answers. And this is a track number 10. Track 10. Every home and office should have a fire extinguisher. Although there's a good chance that it will sit on the wall for years collecting dust, it could end up saving your property or even your life. So, what does a fire extinguisher consist of? The main part of the extinguisher is simply a large metal container that is cylindrical in shape, rather like a bell jar. In the past, these used to be red, but nowadays they come in many different colours. The container is full of water or some other substance, such as foam, that can be used to smother a fire. At the top of the container is a lever, and attached to the lever there is a thin extended pin that goes down into a gas cartridge. 
This looks rather like a small bottle or flask and is right in the centre of the extinguisher. Below the lever there's a curved handle which is used to hold the extinguisher and direct it at the fire. On the other side from the handle there is a horizontal nozzle that opens when the lever is pressed and emits a jet of water. At the neck of the container there is a small coiled spring that holds the pin in place and this is connected to a long tube which runs from the spring to the bottom of the container. This is called the discharge tube, which is where the water comes out of the extinguisher into the air. Okay. Track. Now, as you might have probably noticed, now I was hovering the mouse over the parts. And what I'm actually, uh, what I'm doing, guys, now this is what you call eye-brain coordination, okay? Now I'm listening, I'm um, listening carefully to the uh, instructions. So sometimes, okay, so it will tell me, for example, you know, the top, the bottom, so on one side, on the other side, and this is what I'm doing, okay? So when you're doing your exam, you should be doing this, okay? You need to track, I mean, the uh, here, the diagram, track it with your finger, with a pencil, whatever. So this will help you come up with the correct answer. Okay. Now for number one, what, what, what do you think this thing here container. is? Container. Great. Okay. How do I spell container? container. How do I spell it? C-O-N. C-O-N. C-T. T-E-N-A. A. N -R. E. E or I? E. E. I. Okay. The I. E. N. E. R. Well, that's what you call uh -huh. a container. The verb is to contain and the container. Well, how we? Right. Okay. Now, here for number two, he said uh, extended. Pin. Yeah, it's a pin. How do you spell pin? Pin. P I N. Yeah, P I N. Yeah, P -I -N. P. Pin. Yeah, okay, good. And uh, this one, number three. Handle. Handle. Oh, yeah, okay, great. Handle. Here, don't forget, guys, you should not exceed one, one. word. Yeah, only one word. Uh, this one also gives up what? Jet. 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 Excellent. Yes, yeah, so it's a jet. Well, you, you, you um, predicted uh, it could be spray, jet, and uh, jet, which is a rush of water. Okay, and this is why we call the plane is a jet, okay, or a jet, a jet plane, okay. So it means it's like a supersonic plane, uh, whose speed, you know, exceeds that of the sound. Now that's what we call a supersonic or a jet, okay. And the water leaves it through this tube. 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 Okay. Tube. Yeah. Tube. Okay. Tube. Now, is there anyone? Uh, is there anyone of you guys who got all the answers okay. correct? Mm -hmm. you get them all? I have a problem with the spelling. <laughs> okay, now if, if you misspell the word, so that, that's yeah, it's easy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But how many? How many did you get? I get them all, but uh, all, uh, three with um... a three with wrong spelling. <laughs> My goodness. Yeah. Yeah, that's a pity. Okay, so uh, what do you need to do at home? So try to, uh, I don't know. So. Uh, yeah, you, you, you should, you know, stick to a plan. Uh, I will give you a program, okay? So every day, for example, you, you write 10 words or 15 words, okay? The most common words, uh, because mm -hmm. in the listening, so they will give you most common words, okay? And try to do some practice, okay? Practice them. Yes. Or you try to read that often you will improve your spelling. Okay, good. Does Here we have... Here we have, um, in case of emergency, and here we have remove from case and withdraw. And then we have point nozzle. Now, what do you call these? Do, 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 what do we call them? Instructions. Excellent, Ahsanti. Allah irham Yeah, we call them instructions. And the instructions, they start with, uh, you know, a verb which is in the imperative mode. Imperative, yani al-amr. Now, this is why it is very easy to predict. 
if you if you know well here we have remove and i need a verb what do you think number seven will be another verb another verb yeah number eight verb. a verb okay great and here we have a verb you see now because i have right. so instructions so this is the way they are instructions are given you know using the imperative mode of the verb how many instructions do I have? How many? One, two, three, four, four. Okay, now what does this mean to you? So if you have four instructions and you're going to listen to someone talking about four instructions, what do you think they will use so that listeners or people listening to them will understand them? And they have to be coherent and they have to, you know, to be uh, to, to, to be logical in, in their uh, speech. What do you think they yes. should use? What do you think they should use? I have four what? instructions. Logical language. Okay, so what, what will they use? So that others can follow, okay, what they are talking about. They're going to use my grandmother. Is this correct? No. They, <laughs> they're going to use cohesive de devices. Is this correct? Cohesive devices. Yeah. Or, yeah, yeah. Okay, for example, they will talk about the first instruction. Well, well, firstly, you have to remove, okay? After that, or secondly, because this is a process. So normally, they, they would, you know, use these uh, words or linking words, cohesive devices, whatever you call them, so that people listening to them can understand them and they can follow through easily, okay? Now, uh, remove from case and withdraw. And as I said before, you need to make use of, uh, you know, you will not listen to the same words. And I told you before listening, you need to predict, okay, what remove uh, will be uh, in the list. So this is, this is a very good. Yeah, so think of how this word will be replaced or what synonym will be given instead of remove. Now, before you listen, so what suggestions can you give me? Remove, instead of remove, the writer might take, say what? Huh? Take off, take out. Yeah, excellent, for example, take off, take out, okay? Remove from case, instead of case. Another word, instead of case. Box. Maybe box, yeah, maybe box. Withdraw. You know the word, you, you know the meaning of withdraw, guys? No. You pull something. You have push and pull, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So if you withdraw something, you withdraw your money from the bank. Okay? And you withdraw. Yeah. So it could be pull here or it could be pull out. Plastic. Yeah. If you, if you have, for example, a, a bad tooth and you go to the dentist. What do you think the dentist will do with your uh, tooth? He will pull it what? Your teeth. Yeah, no. <laughs> Not all of them. Not all of them. Okay. Sorry. Uh, your teeth, all of them. Okay. So, yeah, pull it out. You pull it out. Okay? So, you pull uh, tooth out. It means that you extract it. Okay? I was teaching and... Uh, uh, it happened that uh, one dentist was in the class. I uh, we talked about tooth extraction. Well, I said you uh, she, she will pull out your tooth. She said, "Well, teacher, we say we extract." Yeah, I know. Uh, well, we extract, but but, but, but uh, this is what they call a jargon of the medical field. Okay, but you know, um, in everyday language, we say I had a tooth pulled out. Uh, maybe extracted. Okay. Anyways, number seven, extinguisher at burning objects. Extinguisher at burning objects. Maybe direct or put it in the yeah, same. Yeah, very good. Okay, so we, well, well, it could be direct. Okay, great. Uh, is there any other word? Focus. Yeah. yeah, it could be a target. Yeah, you target okay, something. Okay, great. 
and top lever with. What do, what do you think you should do with the top lever? Pull it up. Or... Yeah, maybe pull, maybe. And this will, oh. it will do what? The gas, what will happen to the gas? Which? Spray. Release. Release, spray. Okay. And then point nozzle. Yeah, you know the nozzle, right? So, uh, okay. Oh, my God. Yes. So I will go back to the nozzle. Okay. Now, this is what you call the nozzle. Now, you need... Uh, uh, normally, it is like a, a hose. Okay. With something like this. Okay. This is what you call the nozzle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Something like this. Okay. Anyways. So this is what you call the nozzle. Um, and then... So point nozzle at to extinguish or to put out or to smother. Now, you should point the nozzle at what? The at fire. The, at the fire, maybe something like fire. Okay, great. Or burning. The... Okay, good. Now, in order to do this successfully, guys, so I need to pay attention to signposting. Signpost word, they are very important. So because these are a set of instructions, this is a set of instruction, and maybe they will be using, well, first you have to do this. After that, you do this. Finally, do this. Okay, so maybe, maybe. So we're just making predictions, but this is how people, you know, uh, talk. Um, okay. The second thing I need to play to these keywords, okay, because they will be given, in the listening, but uh, maybe the uh, synonyms or maybe opposites, okay? Something like this. Uh, this is what you need to do, and all the questions will follow the same order of the speaker, okay? So I will uh, start with number seven. I will write the answer here. And here, I think, um, in the instructions, yes, no more than three words. No more than three words in each gap, okay? So I'll play the recording. Uh, let me wrap these things off so that you uh, won't get confused. Okay. Uh, then I will play the recording, but I will not stop. Okay. So we move on. Uh, okay. There we go. Track 11. A fire extinguisher can quickly put out a small fire before it spreads. First of all, take the extinguisher out of its case and pull out the safety pin. Nothing will happen when you do this. It just unlocks the extinguisher. Holding it by the handle, point the extinguisher at the fire or whatever is burning. Then all you have to do is to press the lever at the top of the container. This pressure causes the long pin to move down into the gas cartridge. As it does this, it releases gas into the upper part of the cylinder. The gas then forces the water in the main part of the container up the discharge tube and out of the nozzle, producing a jet of water which can put out burning materials such as paper and wood. Okay, now how did you find this? Is it easy, average, or difficult? Huh? It's not, it's not. Very quickly. Okay, okay, no problem. So do you think you need to listen an, um, another time to... Okay, I'll, 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 we will listen to it again, no problem. Because it's no use uh, giving you the answers. Okay, so listen again and try to uh, come up with the answers. Okay. Track 11. A fire extinguisher can quickly put out a small fire before it spreads. First of all, take the extinguisher out of its case and pull out the safety pin. Nothing will happen when you do this. It just unlocks the extinguisher. Holding it by the handle, point the extinguisher at the fire or whatever is burning. Then all you have to do is to press the lever at the top of the container. This pressure causes the long pin to move down into the gas cartridge. As it does this, it releases gas into the upper part of the cylinder. The gas then forces the water in the main part of the container up the discharge tube and out of the nozzle, 
producing a jet of water which can put out burning materials such as paper and wood. Okay. Now, is it better now? Yes. yes. Okay. Now, here I think Huda said, well, the speaker was really talking uh, quickly. Was that you, Huda? Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay, okay. Now, this is not an issue, okay, because we have our own, you know, listening skills. So, as I told you before, not whatever they say is important. There are things that are important and things that are not important. And the good listener, okay, so, so if you are really good at listening, you, you have to focus only on the things that are important. And here, so I will play the recording, and I will tell you that. Now, they will give you some time before, you know, playing the, the, the recording. So during this time, what do I need to do? Well, I need to read uh, the instructions. I need to make some predictions. And as I said before, so I know that, well, here, this is a set of instructions. So maybe they will make use of, you know, cohesive devices or something like this. So I need to pay attention to these things. Now look, we listen now. Track 11. A fire extinguisher can quickly put out a small fire before it spreads. Well, he said, well, he's talking about what a fire extinguisher can do or why is it really important? Well, that's not important for me. So I should focus here because this is, uh, you know, the instruction number one. First of all. Well, he said, first of all, I know that he's going to give me the first instruction. OK. Uh, and um, first of all, so now I need to pay attention. So because he said, first of all, and uh, this is what we call a transition phrase or cohesive device. So I need to pay. Now, this is the first instruction. But whatever he. He said before, first of all, well, that's none of my business, okay? This is what you call information sifting. You sift the trouble. You sift the information, okay? So you take what uh, will help you to answer the question and you discard what really doesn't help you, okay? This is why I told you an effective listener is someone who reads the questions before listening to the tape or to the recording and then they need to make uh, what you call some uh, predictions, okay, to guess the type of word and how is uh, how a, a word could be paraphrased. Now, the, 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 these are the skills that you should equip yourself with before sitting for the uh, any, uh, I mean, for the IELTS exam. Okay, now uh, I will, uh, he said, first of all, I will rewind it a bit, okay? All fire before it spreads. First of all, take the extinguisher out of its case. Well, he said, take the extinguisher out. Well, I know this is to remove out, uh, out of its case. Well, it's the case. And th th that's number two, because here we have and. So they are linked. Two things at the same time. Out of its case and pull out the same. Well, he said, pull out. Well, I know it's withdraw. Okay, now, normally after withdraw, we should have an object. Okay, withdraw what exactly? Well, he said, yeah, what did you safety say? Safety pin. Very safety good. Pen. The safety, safety pin. pin. Now, look, safety pin, it is safe. And then you add T-Y. Okay, safe is the adjective. Well, that's the adjective. T-Y is the noun. The safety pin. Okay. Uh, does anyone got, get this, guys? Did you all get, yes. get it? Okay. Yes. And then, what am I going to do? I am, he said, first Hold. of all. Hey, how did, uh, first of all, and then maybe he will say secondly or after that, okay, something like this. I need to wait for these signpost words. Okay, we listen. Safety pin. Nothing will happen when you do this. So he said nothing will happen when you do this. Now, this is not important. And why do you think they say things, for example, th that... Uh, that are not related to the questions, okay, to allow you some time to record your answers, okay? This is why you don't have to listen to every single word, guys, okay? You have, these are called the keywords. Well, I need to focus on the keywords only. Now, extinguisher, I need a verb, okay? Uh, at burning object. Now, you said it could be direct, maybe, or it could be anything that means direct or anything that means point, 
Okay, we move on. It just unlocks the extinguisher. Holding it by the handle, point the extinguisher at... He said holding it by the handle, and then he said hold the extinguisher. The fire, or whatever is burning. So what, did, what, did the, what is the verb that he used? Holding it by the handle, point the extinguisher... Uh, what did he say? Again? Yeah, I will repeat. Hold that. the... No, this is... Okay, but here, because at burning objects... This is the verb that we need. Holding it by the handle, point the extinguisher at the fire. So, ho, ho. no. Point. Okay, I will repeat this. Holding it by the handle, point the extinguisher at the fire. So, what is the verb? Hold. Point. We well, cannot no. say hold the extinguisher at, but we point something at. Is it clear? Yes, uh, can you play, play it again, please? Yeah, okay, I will do that. Holding it by the handle, point the extinguisher at the fire. So, holding it by the handle, point the extinguisher at the fire, he said, or whatever is burning. Now, this is what you call the burning point. object. Okay, so it's yeah, point. It's said... like this one. It's like this one. Yeah, okay. point the... Yeah, so for example, if... If someone is accusing you of something, so what will they do? They will point... We need to write the point. No, the... no, I told you. The. No, no, I have already told you this. Hawla. The is not important, okay? So because it's a determiner. Now here we need to come up with a verb, but the is not important, okay? Is it clear? Okay. Remember when we did the test, yeah. I told you that this is not required. This is determiner like the, uh, and. Well, if you do not write them, it's okay. No problem. Uh, okay. Point the extinguisher at burning object. And then I have another verb. So we listen. Or whatever is burning. Then all you have to do. What did he say? He said, then all that you have to do or all. Yeah, so look. Then all you have to do is to press the lever at the... So what did we say? What, what should we write here? Press. 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 Okay, press. How, do you, how do you spell press? P-R-E-S-S. Okay, press. So he said press the lever. P-R-E-S-S. Okay. I will repeat it. Burning. Then all you have to do is to press the lever at the top of the container. This pressure causes the long pin to move down into the gas cartridge. As it does this, it releases gas. So what should we write here? Releases. Yes, I think yeah. Huda predicted it right. Now this one releases. releases. Yes. Yeah, release something, it is you set something free. For example, uh, you could release a prisoner. Or, for example, the government has released our salaries. Well, this is the best... A sentence in which you can use the verb to release something. Okay, salaries have been released. Uh, you say nizlu, huh? Ah, nizlu rawatib. Did did they download the salaries? Wallahi alim. Why? Okay, did they download the salaries? Yes, they did. Okay, now. Point nozzle at what exactly to extinguish or to smother the fire? Into the upper part of the cylinder. The gas then forces the water in the main part of the container up the discharge tube and out of the nozzle, producing a jet of water which can put out burning materials such as paper and wood. So, it will put out what exactly now? Because put out means extinguish. Okay, point nozzle at what? Okay, okay, I will, I, I will repeat it, okay? Not burning materials oh. such as paper and wood, a tube, and out of the nozzle, producing a jet of water which can put out burning materials such as paper and wood. So here we have which can burn out, which can put out. And here we have extinguish, which means put out. To extinguish what exactly? Burning material? Ah, uh, yes. Jet of water, but, which can put out burning materials. Yeah, it can put out, because here we have the word put out, which means extinguish, okay? Here, as you can see, you know, the 
we, the order of the words is not the same. So a point nozzle at what? Okay. Uh, at burning materials. burning materials. Yeah, it's okay. You should have. You know, <laughs> uh, no, 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 it's okay. But what are you going to distinguish then? Yeah, we extinguish. Because here we have the word extinguish, to put out. So this is why you need to point the nozzle at burning materials to extinguish. That's it. Alhamdulillah. Okay, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. You're Wahda. good. Uh, okay, Zain. Thalatha out of four, right? Thamsa. Release kitabtha haq bilghalat. Ah, releases. Ah, okay. No kitabtha wa shakhbat alayha. No problem. Okay, anyways. So we're gonna move on uh, to the other activity, this one, okay? So these are other types of questions, guys, and they are about the details, okay? They are about the details. Now, here we have uh, this question, which lecture does the woman attend in the middle of the day? Now, this is one question, and here you have the three options or three alternatives or three distractors. Okay, now here we're looking for what? Now, what type of a question is this? Choices. Yeah, this is an MCQ, multiple choice question. Okay, I will write MCQ here. MCQ, okay. Now for MCQs, guys, I think we have already talked about this when we, uh, I think we're doing reading. Now for multiple choice questions, you should never go for the correct answer. Do not do this, okay? Go for the wrong answer and delete it. Now you should... Uh, the first thing you need to do is to rule out any definitely wrong answer. That's what you need to do. And then you will be left with the correct one. Okay, now this way you can read all the options. But the problem with the students is that, for example, they read the first option, they think it's the correct answer, and they forget about the other options, which might be uh, more appropriate. Okay. Now, here we have which now, we need to underline what they call the keywords. So we're looking for what? What are we looking for here? We're looking for a lecture. Lecture, okay, so which lecture does the woman attend? And here we need to focus on a woman, not a man. So because in these types, you know, of uh, questions, so if they said the woman, so it means that we have two people talking, a man and a woman. So our focus should be mainly on the woman, not the man. Attend, and we have in the middle of the day. So we're looking for a lecture that a woman attends when exactly in the middle of the day. Okay? Now that's what we need to focus on. Now, the first thing I need to do is to highlight or to underline the key words. That's number one. Now, rule number two, uh, these key words... Okay, they will be reflected in the listening. I know this. But maybe I won't be listening to the same word. So maybe like it could be a lesson or it could be, um, you know, a session, something like this. Okay, in the middle of the day, uh, can you give me any, any alternative that means in the middle of the day? Noon. No, maybe at noon, yes. Lunch time. Lunch time. Very good. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. And then the lecture, it could be one of these. Uh, library skills, technical design, history of architecture. Now, the same thing, you will not hear the same words. Okay. They will be paraphrased. Now, this is why this task is really challenging. Now, the, uh, I mean, the question uh, will be paraphrased. The answers will be paraphrased. Okay. So, it is challenging. And this uh, type of question is worth one mark, okay? So it's only one mark because here we need to choose only one answer. Now, number two, this one. Okay, here we have a list of items and we need to choose two things. Uh, they should take, or hikers, uh, tourists, they should take on the walk. Okay, there are two things that they should take. Now, here we have uh, four, seven items. So we need to choose uh, two out of these uh, seven items. 
only two. The same thing, guys. So the options here, large, rack sack. Now, who who can give me, uh, who can tell me what the rack sack means here? What does it mean? You know the back bag? Yani, hadi haqibat al Yes, Hello? maybe. Okay, now, yeah, that, that's kind of a back bag. Okay, now this one. And then drink container. Now, could you give me Butler. an alternative? Huh? Bottle of bottle, bottle of water. Maybe bottle, yes. Okay, the soft drinks. What are soft drinks? Juice. Okay. Yeah, okay, so the Bowler. opposite is alcoholic drinks. Alcoholic is the Bowler. opposite. Bowler. I said alcoholic is the opposite. It is the opposite of soft drinks. Okay. Then we have cold food. Could you give me an example of uh, cold food, guys? An example. Ice cream. Ice cream. Uh, this is a frozen food, not cold. Sandwich, maybe? Yeah, sandwiches are cold food. But ice cream, guys, so this is a frozen. Okay, not cold. Cold bird. Okay, it could be a sandwich. Maybe, I don't know. Could be a sandwich, could be biscuits, whatever. So anything that is cold, okay, not hot. And then insect repellent. Now to repel is to oust. Uh, uh, yeah, very good. Repellent. Okay, yes. Okay. Repel. Uh, now insect repellent. And uh, if you are on a walk, I don't think, uh, I think it's uh, stupid to take an insect repellent with you because you are in the open air. Okay, a camera and the sunglasses. Okay, so we need to focus on two things. You understand what the sunglasses is, right? Yes. Sunglasses, you understand. Okay, camera. Okay, you already know camera. Okay, now number three. Here, what do we have? Here, this question because they ask you to come up with two items. Now, this is worth two marks. Is it clear? Yes. Two marks. Now, this is because here the answer could be A, B, two or choices. C. One mark, yes, here you have two two marks. And when you're doing your test, now this is very important. Some students may not know this. Okay, you will be writing your answers in a, an, a, on an answer sheet like this. So answer sheet, and you have the number of questions. So one, two, three, up to 40 guys, okay? Now let's say yes. we went for, let's say we went for maybe they need a camera and they need metal and a uh, large rack sack. Maybe. Okay. So A, the answer is A and F. And here, what do I need to do? For example, this is, they will, they will tell you like this one. It's not clear here. Okay. Uh, but, but here it is clear. Uh, questions five to seven. So this means that there are three options that I need to choose. Five, six, and seven. And this one, it must be, now this question, it must be maybe, yeah. Okay. Here I need to choose uh, maybe two to three, or maybe I need to mention both in one box. Okay, maybe. Okay, in one box. Now here the order is not important. For example, I chose A and F, and here they wrote question two to three, guys. Well, which means I have to come up with two things. Okay, so yes. I will. I can write A uh, here. A I will write A, and here I will write uh, F. Or I can write here F and a. For number three, I will write A. So this means what? This means that the order is not important. Is it clear? Yes. For this not in order. It's fine. Yes. No problem. Yes. No problem. Okay. okay. Great. Okay. So let's focus on number one now. And we will um, uh, try to answer this question. So which lecture does the woman attend? So the middle of the day. From Okay, are you ready, guys? Yes. Okay. Okay. We will. We will. Uh, I'll play the recording here. Track twelve. Question one. So, how did your first week of architecture go? Not bad, but Monday is incredibly busy. I've got three two-hour lectures that day. Really? What are they? Well, we start with construction at 10 o'clock. That's really just engineering theory. 
Then I have an hour off to go to the library and catch up on some reading. And at one o'clock, we have a lecture on computer-assisted drawing. <laughs> and that's learning how to use computer programs to help you design buildings. No time for lunch then. <laughs> no, exactly. And we finish the day with a lecture on history. Whoa, that is a full day. OK. I'm not sure, guys. Did you get the answer? Yes. Uh, what do you think the answer is? B. Technical design. B. B. Abdurrahman, what did you go for? Yeah, B. B. Rama. B. Rama is not cooking today. Cool, good. Right, okay. <laughs> right, okay. Now it's B. Uh, very good, guys. You're doing really well. Girl at one o'clock. Yes. Yes. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay. Track 12. Question one. So, how did your first week of architecture go? Not bad, but Monday is incredibly busy. I've got three two-hour lectures that day. So, I've got three. Oh, that's what she said. I've got three. Oh, let me, let me write it. Okay. I've got, I've got three, uh, two. Okay, let me write this in words. So, I've got the three, two. Our hours lectures okay now it means that she has got three lectures and each one okay uh takes two hours and so what do you call this type of adjective what kind of adjective is this no. falafel adjective is it okay no no, not falafel. Banadora adjective. No. Compound adjective. Is it okay? Yes. Yeah, it's a compound <laughs> adjective. Compound, it means made up of two things, guys. Okay? Compound adjective. Okay, now, it's a two hour and it doesn't take the S. So, just like the example of four door car, it doesn't take an S. Okay? So, she has got three lectures and here we have three alternatives. So, we need to focus on uh, the one which is in the middle of the day. Okay? We go on. Really? What are they? Well, we start with construction at 10 o'clock. Well, she said we start with construction at 10 o'clock. Is this important, guys? Is this no. important? No, that's not important. But I need to listen to it so that I can exclude it. Okay? I must ex exclude this. That's really just engineering theory. Then I have an hour off. Well, that's about engineering theory. Okay, so, and it is not mentioned here. It is not mentioned here. Okay. To go to the library and catch up on some reading. Well, that's not a lecture to catch up on some reading. Well, that's not a lecture. Okay, this is library skills. So, what do I need to do? I need to uh, remove this alternative. Remove library. No, yes. That, that's what you need to do, guys. This is what you call the elimination process. And you need to go through this process in order to. Uh, come up with the correct answer. Okay, so remove this. Rule it out. Well, it's not there. Okay, now we're left with technical design and with history of architecture, but still we need to focus on the one which is in the middle of the day. Okay, we move on. And at one o'clock, we have a lecture on computer. Well, she said it's one o'clock. One o'clock, well, that's the middle of the day. Okay, so did you hear, did you hear the phrase one o'clock, guys? Yes. yes. Okay, good. Catch up on some reading. And at one o'clock, we have a lecture on computer-assisted drawing. <laughs> so we have a lecture on computer-assisted computer. drawing. Well, I don't know. It is not clear. See, it's computer-assisted drawing. But here from, you know, from Draw. computer drawings, or maybe this has something, but it's still, I'm not sure. Okay, so I need to listen because they will come up with the exact with the exact paraphrase. <laughs> and that's learning how to okay. use computer programs to help you design buildings. You see here, this is how to use computer design. programs to help you design buildings. Okay, well, that's what Building. you call technical design. Uh, still, guys, okay, I need to listen to number three. So maybe I didn't get it right. No time for lunch then. <laughs> so you see here, so he said no time for lunch, just to make sure that she's talking about the middle of the day. Okay, guys? No, exactly. And we finished the day with a lecture on history. Well, we finished the day with a lecture, uh, with lecture, a lecture on history. history. Well, this is history, so to now the correct answer is this one. Alhamdulillah, so I think all of you got this.
Now we move on to this one. Now this one, as I said, it is challenging, okay? Uh, most of the time, guys, so this could be in the right order or they could be in a jumbled order. Jumbled, okay? Now this random. is the issue. Hey, I'm going to add a random order, okay? Now, if you have numbers, the arqam, they are in the right order. They will follow the same order of the listing. Like in, if you have letters, so most of the time they are in a random order, at a random order, whether they are in a jumbled order. Okay. So Maptar, so what do you need to do? Now before listening, because you have some time. So just run your eyes over these items, okay, and try to learn them. Well, this is a large, okay. This is a container, it could be a bottle. Well, these are sort of things that could be juice. This could be sandwiches. This could be some, okay, I don't know, whatever, people have or whatever. So a camera and, the, well, I know all the items. Then you listen and you try to exclude because you will hear most of them or maybe all of them or maybe some of them. Anyway, so if, anyway, so if something is not there, exclude it. Okay, that's what you need to do. Okay, we're going to do this. Uh, let me, yeah. Oh, that is a full day. Okay. Question two. You will hear a man telling a group of hikers what to take on a bushwalk. Now, we recommend that you get yourself a small bag to carry your supplies in. But please, not a heavy rucksack. The lighter, the better. Make sure... Okay, now what do we need to exclude? A small bag. Yeah, he, he said a small bag. Had okay. a large bag. Uh, yeah, I have to exclude this because mm -hmm. he said the opposite. Okay, now this is not there. But oh, this is fine. Okay, cool. I'm showing you the process. And then later on, we will do some practice and I will leave you to your own devices. Okay? But now, because we are learning the skill. But please, not a heavy rucksack. The lighter, the better. Make sure you wear a good pair of hiking boots with thick... So he said, make sure you are a good pair of hiking boots. Do we have hiking boots here? No. Okay. Now that's why I told you sometimes. So they will mention items that are not written here. Okay. So I need to pay attention. But please, not a heavy rucksack. The lighter, the better. Make sure you wear a good pair of hiking boots with thick socks. That's just here. Thick socks. It is not mentioned. You'll need a decent sized plastic water bottle that can be easily refilled. What is this? A plastic water. Drink. Yeah. Drink. So this is a drink container. Drink container. Yes. And as you can see, guys, so it has been paraphrased. Okay. They didn't say, I mean, the speaker didn't say drink container, but he said a plastic bottle that can be easily refilled. Well, that's what you call a drain container. Okay. Now, number two. So we're going to keep this choice. We move on. Don't bring cans of soft drink. What did he say? Soft drink. Don't bring. Yeah, don't bring. Okay? So cans of soft drinks. Oh, well, the rule is, I will tell you the rule, guys. So this is a skill that uh, uh, may save your day on, uh, save your life on the day of the exam. So normally, if you listen to the same words, well, to the same sounds, you should avoid them. Now, if you're uh, studying for the TOEFL exam, well, that's a rule in the TOEFL I will tell you, always avoid similar sounds. Now, if they mention the exact words, be sure that this is wrong. Because here they are testing your, you know, comprehension abilities. So how do they test this? It is by gauging the way or by, you know, giving you something that will, that they will make sure that you can paraphrase it. You can say it in other words. Okay, this is how. So if you have, if you have, um, something if they if they give you the same words be sure that the answer will be wrong okay uh because this is not dictation now this is listening comprehension so are you someone who is able to process information and to recognize what you call paraphrased information if you are this type of person it means that uh, you are a good one and you will come up with the correct answer okay so my piece of advice to you guys so if you listen to the same words and this is not a rule, guys. This is not a rule, but it works 
let's say 90%, okay? So if you're not, if you're not sure of the answer and you heard the same words, do not go for the same words. Go for the other one. Okay, I will repeat this one. You'll need a decent sized plastic water bottle that can be easily refilled. Don't bring cans of soft drink as they don't quench your thirst. And we'll be stopping for a picnic lunch. So please bring sandwiches or fruit, that sort of thing. And we recommend a wide... So what do you call sandwiches and fruit here? Yeah? So they are an example of sandwiches. what? Sandwiches. Hey, they are an example of what? Cold food. Yeah, cold food. Okay, so fruit, sandwiches. Well, that's something that... Okay, he, he did not mention this, you know, literally. Mm. Okay, but Fruit. So he, yes, he, a fruit can he cold. Yes, sandwich. Uh, <laughs> okay, we move on. Uh, and then insect repellent, camera, and sunglasses. We listen. So please bring sandwiches or fruit, that sort of thing. And we recommend a wide brimmed hat to protect you from the flies, which can be pretty irritating at this time of year. Okay, so he mentioned the flies, so these are insects. Hat. But he said hat. Very good. Al Qubba. Okay. Okay, now this is what you call a hat, but not this one, which is insect repellent. So I'm not, I'm not going to choose this one. You may need suntan lotion too, and of course... Okay, suntan lotion. Now, if it is sunny, uh, not to burn your skin. So suntan lotion, but here it is not mentioned. Okay, so this is why I told you sometimes they will mention items that are not on the list. Don't forget your binoculars, because the... And he said binoculars. Now, is be, uh, uh, binoculars, are they, uh, are they a camera? Shiani. Oh, we have already studied this word. Who can remember, Mandar. guys, the word binoculars? Mandar. Mandar. Hey, binoculars, okay? Binoculars, okay. Well, binoculars, camera? No. Yeah, a camera, you know, it's a device. Uh, la, 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 that you use to, you know, to take pictures. But binoculars, no. It is to see something which is far away from you. Well, that's binoculars, okay? So the camera is not binoculars. Be careful. Okay, and uh, I think we, we are left only with one chance, uh, which is the sunglasses. So. View from the top of the mountain is fantastic, but you won't get the full benefit if you're just wearing sunglasses. You see? You won't get the full benefit if you're just wearing sunglasses. Well, we do not need this. Now, he said two items. So I'm dead sure that it is B. B and D. Yes. Okay. Now, if you are, you, you see, if you, if you are a good student and uh, you were successful, you know, in uh, choosing the correct answers, and the guy will carry on. Well, two items. I have already chosen them. I know that I am. These are the correct answers. So I will stop listening to the guy, okay? And what will I do? I will jump and, you know, preview the other questions, which is better. Is it clear, guys? Yes. But this is only if you are dead sure, 100% sure that you came up with the correct answers. So let the guy talk and uh, try to preview, uh, you know, the questions here. Uh, question number three. Now, this is... Uh, this will do you a lot of good, and you will always be ahead of, you know, ahead of the speaker. The speaker will be running after you, and this is what you need to do on the day of the exam. Do not let the speaker be, you know, in front of you. No, okay. L let the speaker, you know, uh, uh, try to follow you. This is very important. Okay. Question number three. The speaker says sharks. Do you know what sharks are? You know them? Yes. yes. Where do they live? Ocean. Uh, ocean. Yeah, they live in the ocean or in the sea. Okay, now, the speaker says sharks are unlike. Okay, it is improbable. Uh, no, they, they are not like. They are not like any other fish because they, well, I need to come up one with one reason. Now, here he's talking about sharks. We know that sharks are fish. But they are not like different. Any fish. Yeah, they are different, yes, sir, from fish in one respect only. Now, only one. He said sharks are unlike any other fish because for one reason they are not like other fish. Okay, they have one characteristic, but they do not share it with fish. 
Now, what do you think it is? We can predict here, they cannot float in water. Is this plausible? Is this possible? They cannot no. float in water. You know float? Yes, the opposite of yes. sink. Yes, we are the opposite of sink. Okay, they yes, can. Well. Okay. The number two, yes, they yes, are yes. unable. They cannot swim backwards. They cannot swim backwards. Okay, and yes. number three, they can catch their prey. And this is the prey, Farisa. Anything you feed on is a prey. They can catch their prey in the air. Now, which one do you think is the most plausible? Which one? B. B. Maybe B. They are unable to swim backwards. But is it only sharks who cannot swim backwards? Or maybe other fish have this characteristic? Now, this is the question. Because here we need to come up with a unique characteristic that only sharks have. Only sharks. Okay. Now, what do you think? I don't know. Logical? Yeah, this is logical. Are you a fish? <laughs> no. <laughs> not a fish, so we don't know. Okay, now this is what you call scientific information. So, but here we're looking for one characteristic of sharks. Uh, you listen and you will get it. And try to pay attention to signposting, guys. So signposting or signpost words, they are very important. Okay, have a listen now. Question three. In what way are sharks different from other fish? Well, for one thing, they have to keep moving constantly. And that's not the case with other fish? No. Bony fish can stay still because they have a kind of bladder which keeps them afloat, but not sharks. Basically, they're heavier than water, you see, so if they don't keep moving, they sink. Is that so? And another interesting thing is that they can't swim backwards, though they're not alone there, actually. And we've recently discovered that even though they're big, they can still leap into the air from really deep water to catch their prey, things like seals. But they have that in common with other large fish. Wow, they're pretty awesome creatures, aren't they? Okay, guys. Now, do you think you got the correct answer? I think no. it is. <laughs> Okay, let me let me let, let me hear your answers. Uh, uh, Khawla, what did you go for? Gum. <laughs> what is it? A, A B C Mar. All of them. Oh, okay. Rama. Ma hazarti. Ma hazarti. Okay. Uh, Abdurrahman. Hey. Hey. Uh, Huda. By Huda and Abdurrahman, you are really very. Who gal? Who gal? And I mean, gal. If the curse wakef, mekana rah y yghus yطيح تحت يعني. Zain, يعني they cannot float in water. بعدين قال ليش اسمه يعني إن are not able to go back. But are they alone? This is the problem. Omahna, we are looking for a unique characteristic. Uh, we are. So we're going to listen again, guys. Question three. In what way are sharks different from other fish? Well, this is the question of the guy. In what way are sharks different from other fish? Well, that's the question. Now, listen to the signpost, because I told you guys, when you, well, when you listen to answers, okay, so try to focus on signposting. It's very important. Habibi, it's a part of the English language, okay? This is a skill that you need to, to, to learn, guys, okay? Well, for one thing. Well, she said for one thing, okay? So the question was, how are sharks different from other fish? She said for one thing. Now, this is what they call a signpost word or phrase. Now, I need to pay attention to the answer. The answer will be there because she said for one thing. Now, this is the only thing that makes them different from other fish for one thing. Okay. Yeah. But the problem with you guys, when you listen to the conversation, you do not focus on these words, which are very important and they can save your life, as I said before. Okay, so for one thing, what is it? They have to keep moving constantly. Well, she said, well, they have to keep moving constantly. Now, constantly means at all times, okay? 
they have to keep moving constantly. We don't have this. We don't have a paraphrase of this. But this is the reason. Okay, or yeah. And that's not the case with other fish? No. Uh, and that's not the case with other fish? No, he's uh, just to make sure, guys. Well, this is something that sets them apart from other fish. No, bone. said no, no. Many fish can stay still because they have a kind of bladder which keeps them afloat. But so bony fish, bony fish can still uh, can stay still it, without moving because they have a bladder. So, now this is what you call the air bladder. Bladder here, methanol, methanol Hawaii. So some fish they have this air bladder, okay, and it helps them uh, keep to afloat. stay. Yes, a float, mm. yani like in sharks, no. Okay, look. Not sharks. Not sharks. But basically, they're heavier than water. So they are, it reverts back to sharks, they are heavier than water. See, so if they don't keep moving, they sink. So if they don't keep moving, they sink. Well, it means that they cannot float in water. Well, this is the answer, okay? Now, let's listen oh, to number okay. two, B and C, to clear out any misunderstanding here. Is that so? And another interesting thing is that they can't swim backwards. So they can't swim backwards. Okay, they are unable to swim backwards. Now the question is, are they alone or they share this characteristic with other fish? <laughs> though they're not alone, they're actually... So she said, though they're not alone, actually. Okay? Uh, no, then this doesn't set them apart from other fish. Actually, and we've recently discovered... <laughs> No, not kill them. Sharks cannot. Maybe maybe there are other fish that can do this, that can swim back backward. Okay. And some some fish, Makarit all. He called some with other fish. Okay, but, but we don't know whether all fish, for example, cannot swim backward. We don't know this. Big, they can still leap into the air from really deep water to catch their prey. So they can, uh, you know, uh, leap into the air to catch their prey, okay. But is it sharks alone or they share this characteristic with other fish? Things like seals. But they have that in common with other large oh, fish. So, wow, they have they're that pretty in common with other large fish. Now they share this characteristic. Now the only one that makes them different from other fish, uh, the only thing that makes them different from other fish is this one. They cannot they float cannot in float. water. Okay, yeah, okay, great. If they stop, if they stop, they will they see. should, yeah, yeah, they will see. Okay, uh, and uh, now that, that's a question here do they ever sleep? No, no, they don't sleep, Sharks they keep moving continuously. This Sharks is what you sleep, Mustahil. I don't know. <laughs> Because she mentioned they cannot, they keep moving. Con yeah, they will, they, they will sleep on the ocean bed. No problem, okay? Okay. okay. For example, we cannot fly, but does this mean that uh, we do not sleep? No, we, we sleep. Okay, I don't know. So I don't know. Well, you, you, you can Google this and uh, look up the information and share it with us next time. Okay, now number four, guys. What is the Jimao building? Now, this is a building. Uh, uh, probably now this picture is about this building, okay? Oh, uh, is it a home for the native people of Caledonia? Now, here the native people they are the people uh, who are the originals. Is it clear? Like if you say native people of America, they are the red Indians, okay? Native, Luman Is it clear? Yes. Yeah, so a home for the native people of New Caledonia, or a unique example of Italian architecture, or a place to learn about Kanak culture. Now, these are, these are what we call the keywords, okay? So I will play the recording, I will not stop it, and you try to come up with the correct answer. So focus on the keywords. Awesome creatures, aren't they? Question four. The Chibao Center is a magnificent building that symbolizes the existence of the Kanak people, the original inhabitants of the islands of New Caledonia in the Pacific Ocean. It was designed by the world-famous Italian architect Renzo Piano and was opened to the public in 1997. The center itself is based, in every detail, on the layout of a traditional Kanak village, 
made up of three sections which contain exhibition spaces, a library, as well as conference and lecture rooms. It's surrounded by beautiful gardens and is naturally ventilated with many spaces open to the elements. Okay, guys. So what do you think the answer is? B. B. Maybe. No, okay. no problem, yeah. no problem. So maybe my intonation was not good. Okay, B. Uh, any other answer, guys? Okay, Abdul Rahman said B. What about Huda? What did what do you think the answer is? No, I don't get it. You didn't get it. Uh, Khawla. I think Khawla is busy doing something. Choose uh, B. But he mentioned D. Uh, okay, you chose B. Uh, Rama. I think C. You think B, okay? But Hala, yani, uh, because he did not get the answer, so I need to uh, play this again symbolizes the existence of the canon. Okay. Question four. I said for this type of question, guys, okay, now the, the, these are the most challenging questions in the IELTS exam, the home and multiple choice questions. Now, I already talked about the elimination process. Now, the first thing I need to do, I need to listen carefully and I need to rule out the definitely wrong answers. So let's do this. The Chibao Center is a magnificent building that symbolizes the existence of the Kanak people. Well, it symbolizes the existence. Now, it's only a symbol, okay? Now, it cannot be a home for the native people of New Caledonia because he said it symbolizes. Okay? Now, this is wrong. We yeah, any place. It symbolizes the existence. They symbolize the of the pharaohs. Okay, the human pharaohs. But, 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 يعني okay, the original inhabitants of the islands of New Caledonia in the Pacific Ocean. It was designed by the world famous Italian architect Renzo Piano. And he said it was designed by the famous mm -hmm. architect. Uh, Italian, Italian architect. It was designed, but design here. It doesn't have No, it is not an. It is not an example of Italian architecture. That's not. It was designed by an Italian. So, but it is not a unique example. Now listen to number three. Guys. And was open to the public in 1990. It was open to the public. It means public visit this place. Public means people. Okay. He's seven. The center itself is based in every. So it Again? is a center. He said this center. Okay, number one, it's a center. Free detail on the layout of a traditional Kanak village made up of three sections which contain. Ex so there are three sections. Exhibition spaces. So they have exhibition bases. A library. Library. Maktaba, as well as conference and lecture room. Conference, Mu'tamarat, and lecture, Muhadarat, rooms. So, what do you call the, a place where you have conference rooms, library? What is it? It's a place to learn. Yeah, it is a place to learn about this. Okay, cool. Now, the last one. Now, which three things? So, here we need to focus on three things. Does the woman like? Now, if you like something, how would you say this in English? If you like something, what, how would you, how, what would we say in English? Refer. No, no. Refer. You like something, okay? Now, how how can you say this in English? How how can you express you like in English? You can say what? Awesome. I like. Yeah, you can say awesome. Yeah, wonderful. So I like this, or I adore this. Okay, or I have a craze for this. Terrible. Hey, So much like, adore. Okay. Uh, have a craze. Oh, that's an idiom. Have a craze for, have a craze for, for example, movies or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. What does the woman like? So normally she is going to express her likes. Okay. And there is what you call functional language. Okay. You have to be very careful, guys. So if you want to express your like, you have to use one of these words. Or you, you can say, for example, wonderful. Uh, I think it's wonderful. I think it's awful. Uh, the opposite. I think it's awesome. Yeah. Okay. So these these things that you need to focus on. 
if you can come up with the the, uh, uh, the correct answer. Awesome. Okay, great. Now, awesome is along with E after the W. Okay. Okay, cool. Now we're going to listen. Uh, three things before we listen. So we... Um, we will try, to, uh, I'm going to read them and then highlight the keywords. Now, the appearance of the plane. Now, if this is one of the answers, what do you think appear or appears could be paraphrased as what? So instead of saying appearance, I like the appearance of the plane. Or I like the, you know, appearance. Can you think of any other word that means appearance, guys? Any other word? No? No. No, okay. Now the idea of working for an airline. So the idea of working for an airline, uh, traveling to unusual places, okay? Uh, here, the idea of uh, uh, working, she can be an air hostess, okay? Maybe working for an airline or a pilot, whatever. And here we have a traveling to unusual places. Okay, and collecting airline equipment. Okay, here we have collecting and equipment and watching the planes take off. What does it mean, take off? Is it to leave or to arrive? Leave. Yeah, what is the opposite of take off? The opposite. Take down. Okay, it is to land. Okay, tahutu ta'ira. Okay. The plane, for example, is landing on the noise of the engines. Uh, of course, the plane has reactors, but not in engines. And being a passenger, a passenger is someone who travels from one plane to another. Yeah, okay. Now, three things, guys. But three things, you focus on them. Okay, so, and you try to choose them. So, let's have a listen. I will not say the appearance of the appearance is, the mother is the look, the look of something. Okay. Okay. Yeah, the way it looks. Now that's the look of something. Okay. Let's say, for example, one, for example, the plane is flying on the zero, or half of the head is flying on the other side. One says, "Oh, new look." <laughs> new look is what you call the appearance. Is it clear? Right. Okay. It's surrounded by beautiful gardens and is natural, with many spaces open to the elements. Okay. Now we listen. Questions 5 to 7. I've always been interested in plane spotting ever since I was a little kid growing up in Holland. I think I just like the look of them. You what did she say here? I think I just look for uh, them. like the look. So this oh. one is which, which number? E. E or A? A. Yeah, a. I just think, yeah, I think uh, I like the look of them. The look of them. Mandal. Yeah, so the way planes look, okay? It is. She mentioned something about um, when the plane take off. No, no, look. Now listen again, okay? I've always been interested in plane spotting ever since I was a little kid growing up in Holland. I think I just like the look of them. So I think I just look like the look of them. Now the look is the appearance. You know how each airline has a different tail to. So how each uh, now she's explaining now hey, uh, how airline. Yes. Identify it uh, like a flag. I used to go to the international airport with my dad, and we try to see every plane in an airline's fleet. They each have a serial number. Though it's quite a job to see them all. And I love seeing planes from unusual places. Well, here she said, I love seeing planes from a plane. Sorry, no. Uh, listen, see. you need to understand. I, I like seeing places from unusual places. Now, here she said unusual places. And here, it not a traveling. She said, seeing. I love seeing. It is not traveling. Oh. This is why I told you, if you remember, I told you when they say the same words, do not go for this option. You see here, because he said unusual places, many students, so, whoa, teacher, she said this. Okay, she said it, but this is not the correct answer. This is why I told you, try to always avoid similar sounds. 
Okay, so here she said seeing unusual uh, planes from unusual places, but never traveling to unusual places. Okay, so this is the wrong option. I repeat this. Like a flag. I used to go to the international airport with my dad, and we try to see every plane in an airline's fleet. They each have a serial number, though it's quite a job to see them all. And I love seeing planes from unusual places, even though I don't really want to go there myself. I also like souvenirs from planes, and I get my friends to bring me things whenever they fly anywhere. I've got tray tables and knives and forks, and I've even got a seat belt. Okay, now what do you call these items? D. Yeah, equipment. The airline equipment, okay? So, which is... Uh, <laughs> very good, excellent, yes. I learned to learn the name of this. Rama, do you understand? Do you understand this? Rama? I don't understand. I don't understand. Do you understand? Do you understand? We have... We have... <laughs> Uh, we have a woman from another. <laughs> She's Sorry. from another planet. This woman, guys, okay. لا ما شاء الله عليك. هلا عرفتوا ما يعرفوهم الخواشيق هذا اللي هم السبونز. Yes. سبون ملاعب. زين والفورك خولة واو. How do you call them? شوك. نقولها شوكة أو شوتش. شوتش شوتش. Oh my gosh. هي شوكة صح؟ ايه احنا لو لو بقول لك بالتونسي سموه فرشيطة بالتونسي لأنه بالفرنسي يقولوا فرشات مشان هيك يعني باي اوكي فرشيطة باي فرشات فورشات بالفرنسي مشان هيك باي اوكي ناو كولكتنج يا شي توكت اباوت فورك شي توكت اباوت نايفز شي توكت اباوت سيت بيلت اوكي باي وي وي كاري اون وي ار ستيل ليفت وذ اونلي ون ايتم بس اي تيك اباوت 7000 فوتوز اوف بلينز ا يير اند ايم اوفن داون هير ات 5 ان ذا مورنينج تو كاتش ا شوت اوف ذا بلينز لاندينج يو ار نوت اكشلي سبوزد تو جيت تو نير ذا اير فيلد You should be three minutes away from the fence. Quite often, the patrol cars come round and tell you to move away. But I love the sound of the jet planes. Well, she said, I love the sound of the jet planes. Now, what is this? Yeah, the noise. Okay, the noise of the, the uh, engine. Okay, now it's 4.36. Uh, okay, but do you have any questions, guys? Was everything clear? Yes. Alhamdulillah. But inshallah, next time we're going to finish uh, section two and we're going to have an exam on both section, uh, sections one and sections two. And today, inshallah, later at night, I will uh, send you some listening practice for section one only. Okay. So we try to practice section one. So maybe I will send you one or two. I will send you the sound clip together with uh, the exercise. Try to do them. Until we meet next time, inshallah, I wish you a good time, guys. Thank you very much for attending, and see you next time. Bye-bye. Uh, doctor, uh, sorry, you said that you will give us a link for practice. I for didn't say. For the listening? No, for me. I, okay. Yeah. No, not for the listening, for the spelling. For the spelling. Okay. Spell I, will, uh, 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 I will send you this on WhatsApp, okay? Uh, recommended okay. words. Uh, yeah. Can I see the cover of this book, please? Which the book? Cover. Maybe I have a book. This one? This book. The, yeah. I will send it to you. No problem. I will send it to everyone. But you know why I, why I don't want to send you this? So that okay. you, cannot, okay. you cannot do it at home and then you show muscles in the classroom. Okay? Okay, now this is the book. It is a new insight. No, I will not do it. I will follow with you. No, no, it's I okay. I have I, this book. Oh, uh, great. I will send you the book. No problem. Mm. And I will send you another book. Okay? No problem. Mm. But the problem here, when we are doing the activity, so because I need to gauge, so whether you are doing well or not. So if you do things at home and then you come to yes, class, yeah. oh, I can tell nothing. Is it clear? Yes, I will not do it. 
But no, no, okay. I, I like to be engaged in the class better <laughs> yeah. than uh, saying the answer to. Yeah. We are very, not playing. We yeah, very good. Okay, uh, now, do you want me to send you the book? For me, I have the book. You have the book. Okay, now I will send yeah. it for the other students. No problem. I will. Uh, yeah, you will mm -hmm. find it on WhatsApp tonight, inshallah. Okay, guys. Okay. Yalla, take care. And thanks okay. for your engagement. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Salam. Assalamu alaikum.